My name's Ned. This is my dog, Jai. And today we're talking about how to get data from an Excel file hosted on SharePoint down into Power BI. It's very easy to load data from an Excel file on your local computer into a Power BI dashboard. And it's very easy to load data from a SharePoint list into Power BI itself. But it's not quite as straightforward as it might appear to load data from an Excel file stored on a SharePoint into Microsoft Power BI. Now, Jai, why do you think we might want to do this? Well, I'll tell you why. It's because when you have an Excel file stored on your local computer, you'll need something called a data gateway for Power BI to refresh that Excel file onto the Power BI service. However, if you have an Excel file hosted on SharePoint Online, that's not quite the same story. Instead, Jai, you can essentially have the file loaded on the SharePoint and by someone else and have the Power BI dashboard refresh on its own automatically. With that said, let's get started. Here's a SharePoint site that I created on my Azure tenant. It's called Example Site. And here's an Excel file that I've created with some data. Now, I'm going to want to import data off of this Excel file. With Power Query, you can define a range that you want to import, but it's much easier to just import one specific table off a particular worksheet. So for all of the data that I want to import, I'm going to make sure that it's in a table that's named very nicely. So I'm going to move this data into a table because I'm going to import the state table. Then I'm going to make sure that it's named date table. All right, I'm going to go and I'm going to save this and I'm gonna upload it onto my SharePoint. Okay, so here it is, and as you can see, I've saved it onto my SharePoint, and here it is on in the folder path, shared documents. I'm now gonna open up Microsoft Power BI and create a new file, and I'm gonna click the Get Data button, and in the dropdown, I'm gonna search for SharePoint. And as you can see, I have a few different options. I have SharePoint folder, SharePoint online list and SharePoint list. In this case, I'm going to choose a SharePoint folder. So I'm going to double click that and it's going to ask me for my site URL. I'm going to give it my site URL, which in this case is just this first part. So my base URL here, then backslash sites, then my example site. I'm going to click OK. And it's going to load and it's going to ask me to authenticate. In this case, I'm going to use my Microsoft account. So I'm going to click sign in. It's going to sign me in. And then I'm going to hit connect. And it should let me get onto the Microsoft SharePoint site, at which point I can then see essentially my Excel file. Instead of, of hitting load, I'm going to hit transform data. And then I'm going to click right here for binary. And just like that, I'll have imported in my table. And as you can see right here, here's my date table that I want to insert. So I'm going to click that. And then boom, here is my SharePoint data ready to roll. Now, as you can see, it's importing this Excel file off of this site. So as long as I don't change the name of this, this file or the location of it, but just update the content, my Power BI can refresh this date table whenever it wants. But what if I have folders on my SharePoint, in particular nested folders? Well, I've moved that Excel file here into a folder called test documents. Let's take a look at how this changes our Power Query flow. As you can see on the surface, it looks fine. But when I click navigation, what you'll notice is I'm now getting an error. And that's because I moved my path. Luckily, fixing this is pretty straightforward. We just need to give it the correct path on this navigation site. So we now know it's in a folder called after shared documents called test documents. So I'm just going to add that on right here and then hit OK. And as you can see, it's now found my Excel file. And if I double click into table, I'm now right back where I started. So I'm going to load this data into the data model after titling it date query by hitting close and apply. And just like that, Microsoft Power BI is going to query the Excel file off of my SharePoint.
Now let's pretend I had built a big, beautiful dashboard off that Excel data, and I'm now ready to publish it to the Power BI service. I haven't, but let's just pretend I had. What I can now do is I can hit the publish button, save it, and I can give it a name. So in this case, test, and I can publish it on up into my workspace. Once it's up into my workspace, I then can go into the dashboard settings and configure it to refresh off of my SharePoint site. So here I am opening up the dashboard, logging into Microsoft Fabric. I'm going to go into my workspace. I'm then going to find the semantic model associated with the Power BI that I just created. I'm going to click these three dots, then go down to settings, and then Right here under data source credentials, hit edit credentials and go OAuth 2. My privacy settings are going to be up to you in this case, because I'm the only person on the organization, I'm going to hit organizational and I'm going to hit sign in. And just like that, this Microsoft Power BI file is now fully connected and live to my SharePoint site. So I can now schedule a refresh to have it refresh automatically on its own daily. So if you enjoyed this video and you enjoy learning about business intelligence, in particular, Microsoft Power BI, Fabric, sometimes SQL, sometimes Python, please consider subscribing and liking this video. Thank you for watching.